Hello everybody, it's me, Get Daved, and we're going to play some Dragon Quest Builders 2. And I think it's going to be a lovely and relaxing and very enjoyable time. So thanks for coming along. If you're not familiar with the first Dragon Quest Builders game, don't worry about it. I'm going to have a little bit of a loading screen. I know it says saving, just trust me. It's generating the seed for our world, perhaps? Anyway, don't worry if you haven't played Dragon Quest Builders 1, or if you're not familiar with the series at all. It's a classic archetypal story. And it's the Dragon Quest Builders series. They have little twists on the endings of respective games. So Dragon Quest Builders is sort of a dystopian sequel to if the bad guy won Dragon Quest 1, basically. And this is... This is a little bit different, we'll see, but it's the, it all boils down to a similar idea. A lot of people wonder, is this game just a Minecraft clone? And I'm going to have to say, no. You can view it as a massive iteration on the idea of Minecraft. Like, it looks good. And it's really more quest-driven, as you might expect from the name, and... Just a treat. Claim builder bonus? I don't know. I pre-ordered by... Um... Two hours? I'm a male. Well... I have extremely dark hair now. It keeps getting darker. I'm looking more presidential all the time. Alright. Summer, so I got a little bit of a tan here. Ah, yes. I still don't know what color my eyes are. No one will agree. No heterochromia setting, either. Ah, oh, no, we'll go with that. Sure. This is, uh... Me. Slightly bigger head. <clears throat> it's me get daved, everybody. Let's build ourselves a world. Oh, I'm happy with it. What a beautiful sky, don't you think? Oh, uh, we'll probably stick with defaults here. Also, that's... So most uh, Dragon Quest games have a certain tune during the, you know, the save and load screen at the very beginning. Um, two has one called, like, Only a Lonely Boy or something like that. And that's what we were just hearing there. Just a charming little plucked string song. <laughs> Yay, we put the recipe for the Dragon Quest logo. All right. That's not to us. Such a philosophy is incompatible with that of the Builder. Hargon front and center, and then in the back that's uh, Malroth. So these are the end bosses from Dragon Quest 2. Hargon's the big bad for most of the game, and then I forget, this is reaching back, but I think you discover it was Malroth all along. Oh yes, this is the, the myth being told. Yeah, fun little twist about Dragon Quest or 2, it's... And I'm gonna give you these little historical fillers on the series, because it's, a uh, It's rich. Um, the hero from 1 goes off and has children, and I think... The Prince of Maidenhall, the Prince of Canock, and the Princess of Moonbrook, they're... His three grandchildren, I think? And they each sort of have inherited one aspect of their of Erdrich's power. So, start as the Prince of Mindhall, he's got his physical strength. Kanok has his uh, ability to use healing magic, and is sort of the first priest or cleric class. And then the princess has access to all of his offensive magic, and is sort of the first wizard type character. Now 
we start with a little tutorial and I'm gonna skip through it a little quickly so we can get to the meat and potatoes. We're, we're rolling with a bad crew in Dragon Quest Builders 2. Hope you enjoy this video with me and you. Oh, that's not Rubus talking. Yeah, I like to build. Alright, they hate me, but they're gonna put me to work. Alright. Captured, rounded up, we're stuck on this boat. And we'll mosey around a little bit. We're low on HP, so we'll just rest for a little bit. You can see resting works a bit differently in this one. We max out at 28 hit points, which is one more than Ragnar in four. That's a pretty good starting HP token. You can check out all the different people on the boat, or all the monsters mostly. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, that's slime. He sees how it is. Oh yeah, we've got a first person view as well. And you can... Zoom in and out as well if you hold down the right angle. Fun fact. Hello! Truth. Well, that's not very nice. The children of Hargon. So these are the the faithful remnants. And now I'm gonna mosey pretty quickly through a lot of these because it can uh, it can go on for a while. So he just wants me to eat some kelp to start things off. They introduce the idea of eating. Kelp doesn't have to be cooked, which is nice. Yep, they're all sure they want to have me dead, but you know, the ship is a little damaged from a storm. So we gotta do a little bit of work to help out. And they all really like destruction, but they can't help but notice. We're pretty good. And, you know, fixing a damaged ship, for example. I'll show you this stuff, because it's exposition. Oh, we got a mean slime. Poor Draki, he's left out of the loop. So these guys, I guess this might be their take on an imp. They don't always fly. They always lisp, which I think is funny. Oh, he's trying to reconstruct things. Gunning for all the builders. And I don't know if they're going to do that in this one, but Dragon Quest 1 is sort of like a small... We'll call it like a cluster of islands that are connected by bridges. And the world of Dragon Quest 2 is that and a whole bunch else. So it has a common map, but you can think of this as a subset of the previous one. So Cantlin exists. It's not like Final Fantasy games where they're quite disconnected. Well, 
Well, you know, good luck. All right, we've learned all we need to know, I guess. So they're out to get the builders, but you know, some work needs to be done. We're up for the chaw. All right, we gotta do what he tells us, so it's time to start repairing. So I don't know if I ever showed this, but if you in the previous game, if you don't have any tool, you can punch stuff, and that's still the case. Equipment does not degrade in this one. Huzzah! And you know that we can get more than one material per a stack. Also, you get fundamental ingredients more often now, which is nice. Oh, he's not supposed to, but hey, you know, we gotta fix up the ship, and you need a builder for that. These are the least committed and or bad guys of all time, which I really like. All right, what's next? Why do we have our dopey grin? They make fun of the builder's face in Dragon Quest Builders 1 a lot. You get a lot of potato comparisons. All right, so we gotta do some, whoops. We gotta do some odd jobs around the ship. Alright, we got some wood. Oh, yeah, he's teaching us how to use our workbench now. So, we gotta put some torches on these little pedestals because they all got put out in the storm. Unlike in Dragon Quest Builders 1, you can set quantity, which is really nice. And the stacks in your inventory, they go up to 999 now. Which is no, no small thing. Oh yeah, and I walked right away from that one. There you go, mate. Yeah, not quite as sinister as it should have been, but... Oh yeah, and we can run around this time. Hanging out with the so-called builder. Alright, so we're gonna go get in a fight with this guy. No weapon, though. That went well. Oh. We're all skin and bones. Yeah, if only we had a weapon and could fight him. What's that book you've got there? Well, I'll tell you. It's our little invention book. Write down all our ideas. He's astounded. I like it. It's it reminds me almost of the Lego movie in a way, where it's just these forces of creativity. Out to make the world a better place. Oh yeah, so you don't operate through the menu as much anymore, so we just square it and boom, there you go. We're equipped. We can't charge up our, uh, our sword right now yet, which is too bad. All right, let's kick his butt. Compound fracture, yeah, I'd say. 
around the neck. Wah, wah. That's right. You can see we're building a little bit of a bridge between us and the monsters. Feeling sympathy for them and they're kind of seeing, hey, we're not all bad. Helping pass the time. Alright, we got one more person to help. Little anime run. So he's just gonna want us to... He's gonna give us these gloves which let us pick stuff up, which is not a thing we could do in the last game. He had to smash it and then place it again. He wants us just to gather some bill or some barrels. Oh yeah, you don't have to hold it. I'm gonna make that mistake lots. There's all sorts of fun additions. Haha! <laughs> Whoa. I won't spoil them all. There's there's actually a tremendous amount of cool stuff added in this game. And I'm not paid to say that by anyone. Unless you're offering. Haha! <laughs> Fine. I'll use all the shoulder buttons. Yep. Alright, and that's the captain we were talking to originally, so let's go say hi. Alright, what you got, captain? That's right, we like building. If we were streaming, we'd straw poll this, but yes, I like building things. Alright, so thank you for joining me for this one. Off with our head. Prepare the cypress stick! That's right, as long as we help out, we can be a member of the crew. We'll be the cabin boy. Ah uh, yes, the big book. Who's the mysterious voice? Doesn't seem like Rubus this time around. And no, I can't advance this text. To be honest, we do a lot of both. As it should be, in perfect balance. Well, I think this bodes well for everyone else on the ship. Alright, let's get below deck where it's safe. He's worried about us. Alright. If the ship is damaged in a storm, just like it was a few moments ago, why a builder could be quite helpful. There we go. Oh, 
Alright, we'll patch up the, the ship with crates. So, yeah, we'll deal with water physics later. Yeah, here it comes. So the more sources of water, the more water blocks you're gonna see. And they can be trouble. The next wave. We're gonna run out of crates. We're gonna need a bigger crate. Water's handled very differently in this game. It actually wasn't a very major feature in the previous Dragon Quest game. There was sort of a water level and you could dig down to it and that was about it. You had some blocks that generated water, but they would just... ...move the water table. Yeah. 